Senator Roberts. Thank you. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I agree with Senator Babette that the government spending is wrong-headed and is causing more harm than good. The Albanese government's announcement this week to cut back on real infrastructure spending to make way for nonsensical net zero spending is counterintuitive, a wrecking ball for future generations. Taxpayers have already paid for the national electricity grid through their tax payments and through their electricity bills. Taxpayers have already built beautiful, cost-effective, baseload coal-fired power stations and the associated poles and wires. Instead of using the annual, but annual share of the budget that goes to infrastructure to build something new and useful, the Albanese government is tearing down what has already been built and building it again. Madness. And much like this Prime Minister, building it with something not fit for purpose. Wind and solar are the most unreliable and expensive forms of power once everything is factored in, including transmission lines. Wind turbines last 15 years, solar installations about the same. All of the nature-dependent power installed under this and previous governments has to be replaced before we get to 2050, and then replaced again and again every 15 years or so after that, again and again and again. Insanity. A permanent black hole that benefits nobody except the predatory, parasitic billionaires who pull this government's strings. Speaking of fit for purpose, Snowy Hydro 2 has proved city bankers like Malcolm Turnbull are crap at picking infrastructure projects. <laughs> to continue throwing good money after bad at this failure will come at the opportunity cost of funding sensible infrastructure projects like Big Buffalo Dam and Hydro, Hell's Gates Dam and Coombalumba Hydro, Urana Water Precinct, Emu Swamp and South East Flow Restoration are all worthwhile infrastructure projects that One Nation will build. Inland rail to the port of Gladstone, the east-west rail line, a steel park at Abbott Point are projects One Nation will continue to push and support and build. And then there are the road projects, schools, rural hospitals and so much more that this government is shelving so it can waste money on the UN's net zero fairy tales. Nightmares. Weather dependent generation needs batteries to back it up. More expense. The environmental destruction is finally getting attention after scars have already been cut across national parks all over this beautiful country. Each gigawatt of coal-fired power has to be replaced with five gigawatts of wind or solar. And no amount of solar will provide power at night without expensive batteries that are dirty to manufacture and last an even shorter time than the solar panels they supposedly firm. Net Zero Alliance puts the cost of 100% renewables with no blackouts by 2050 at $1.5 trillion. Trillion! 260 gigawatts of installed capacity to replace 60 gigawatts of coal. No wonder Infrastructure Minister King announced the Albanese government would now require state governments to pay at least half of any infrastructure project in their state. And new infrastructure projects must be over $500 million before the federal government will fund their half. That will leave the states to pay for most infrastructure projects entirely. That's Victoria done for with all the debt Labor Premier Andrews left behind. What next? A state levy to pay for infrastructure the federal government should rightly be paying for now? Socialists taxing the life out of the public. Australia already ranks 57th out of 62 largest economies for tax income tax levels, one being the lowest tax rate and 56th for company tax. We're nearly highest. Foreign corporations, of course, are not included. They're token. Token tax payments are only for public relations. Successive governments have been unable to deal with multinational tax avoidance because they're not really trying. Electoral donations keep getting in the way. Funny how that works. According to the OECD, Australia's average annual gro wage growth from 2019 to 2022 was the seventh lowest among the 38 OECD nations at less than 3%. Inflation is now 6% after being at 8%. If everyday Australians feel like they're working harder and going backwards, it's because they are. As Senator Babette quite rightly points out in this motion, if it feels like your mortgage and rent are a struggle to pay, it's because they are, thanks to Labor. There are tax cuts for upper income earners coming next year. Here's a better idea. Index the tax thresholds so that Australians don't pay more tax when their wage rises to compensate for inflation and pushes them into a higher rate tax bracket. We should be indexing taxes to the inflation rate to prevent bracket creep. The Prime Minister has wrung every cent out of everyday Australians and the political polls are saying quite clearly people are jack of it. One Nation are now the party of workers. One Nation are the party of sensible economic management for the benefit of all Australians. We have one flag, we are one community, we are one economy, we are one nation. Thank you.